the ISB's conceptual framework, the purpose of it is to set out the agreed concepts that underlie financial reporting. Financial reporting is not a pure science, it's a social science, and therefore one could think of many different ways to do financial reporting, what the objective should be, and what financial reports should contain. As a result, it's important to set down in writing what we have agreed collectively through due process the financial reports should be about. And that framework guides the IASB in setting standards and also guides people applying IFRS to apply standards in the absence of a standard accordance with IFRS IS8. The framework has several components. First and importantly, it sets out the objective of general purpose financial reporting, and I'll go into some of these in a bit more detail in a few minutes. It also outlines the qualitative characteristics of high-quality financial reporting information. What are the characteristics that we are striving to achieve for financial reporting information? What are the elements of financial statements? When do we think about recognizing an asset or a liability or an element of a financial statement? How do we measure them? And then once we do all of that, what are the concepts that underlie presentation and disclosure? All the concepts flow from the objective. So we begin with the objective of general purpose financial reporting, and all of the other concepts in the, in the framework are designed to help meet that objective. In terms of what we do with the framework, the ISB uses the framework to set standards. It's the basis upon which the staff analyzes issues that it brings to the board, and the board makes its decisions about how to account for various items, pensions, leases, various things that, and that uh, Mike's going to talk about some of these later. The role of the framework, therefore, enhances consistency across standards. If we didn't have a framework, we would take each topic and make decisions, and there may or may not be any consistency in the decisions that get made. The framework enhances the possibility or the likelihood that there will be consistency across standards and how we account for things. Equally importantly, it enhances consistency across time as board members change. Board members come to the board with their own personal perspectives and experiences, and that's that's very desirable from that standpoint of setting standards, but they're not permitted to come to the board meeting with their own view of what financial reporting should be about. The board members are committed to following the conceptual framework and setting standards, and as a result, we don't have each board member with its own framework so that as board members change, we run a high risk of changing standards simply because different board members have different views on what financial reporting should be about. The framework helps make sure that the board makes consistent decisions over time. The framework also provides a benchmark for making judgments by, by the board. It tells them what the, the concepts are that are supposed, they're supposed to be applying and how to think about trading off one versus another. Preparers of financial statements based on IFRS also use the framework to develop accounting policies in the absence of a specific standard or interpretation that applies to their circumstance. That is, as you know, in IS-8, there's a hierarchy of IFRS, and the framework is in the IS-8 hierarchy. Therefore, it's important that everyone who applies IFRS understands the framework so that they can make the judgments that they need to make when there is no specific standard or interpretation that applies to their situation. <clears throat> 